Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome to Kufla Game of the Week action. I'm Stephen Stamp here at Justin Chu Stadium on the banks of the Autonomy River here in Peterborough, Ontario. And a big matchup today, an Eastern Conference battle between the hometown and defending McGattaway Cup champion Trent Excalibur and the visiting McGill Redbirds. Both teams come in at 7-2. and two. Whoever wins will go into a tie for first place with the Carlton Ravens. But here's the thing. They will be tied. The tiebreakers do not favor McGill. If McGill wins, Carlton will be first, McGill will be second, and Trent will be third because they'll drop to seven and three. If Trent wins, they have a chance to get Carlton. I don't know the exact numbers. There's a whole formula. But I believe, from what I've looked at, Trent would have to win like 13 to three or 13 to four. Um, I know they have to win by nine or 10 goals. The maximum you can count towards the tiebreakers is 10 goals. Because anything, if you win by more than 10, you just count 10 towards your total for the uh, for the tiebreak for the uh, purpose of tiebreakers. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Either way, though, the benefit of coming second, even even if that's what they come, is if Carlton were to lose in the first round in the playoffs next weekend. Whoever is second becomes the number one seed at the Gatorade Cup, goes straight to the semifinals. Trent, we know, will be there anyway. McGill's going to have a playoff game next week. They will be a host for that game. We just don't know who they're going to play until things wrap up. Well, we have a pretty good idea that they're actually playing Queens in that game. Carlton will be playing Bishops. The winners of those games go on to the Gatorade. And today, the winner for sure gets second place. Trent may have a chance for first, and we're underway. Trent wearing their announcer unfriendly white jerseys with the white numbers. And McGill in the red with the bright white numbers that we like to be able to see. Nobody able to get possession off the first ball. Finally, the Excalibur come away with it. Cole Hanrahan into the offensive zone. He's going to hand it off, trot over to his side. There's Nick Webb. Webb, who was involved in that thrilling double overtime win that, Car that Trent got over Carlton. He made one of the passes to set that goal up. Of course, then the su big surprise this week was Trent losing to Queens the other night. That has stopped them from having a really good chance because if they'd won that a win here and they would know that they're in first place now, things very much up in the air. They are taking their time on the outside hold and load. Sorry, that's Aiden Jeffrey. No, oh, Jack Marwick. He's given it up by now anyway. Trent going to the attack. They start to drive to the net. A defender falls. There's a first shot. It's wide. And McGill's going to get the backup. Nice positioning there by Kyle Glick from Bronxville, New York, one of several Americans on this McGill club. They do tend to draw a lot of players from outside of Quebec for now. Big decision announced by the Quebec government that they will be basically doubling the tuition rate for anyone from out of province, which could spell a huge blow to both McGill and Bishop's programs. Hopefully they'll reconsider that. For now, we've got exciting Kufla action. Trent back in possession. They have had the ball the entire first couple of minutes here. Thanks for being with us here on the Trent YouTube channel. Jordan Duell on the near side. A couple of gorgeous goals last week. He has got a rocket and he is setting up. I'm going to pass it to him. He'll draw the defender. Flips it off to Rye on the near side. Dallin Rye passes it down. Hanrahan rolling out. Skip pass. They get it through and a shot on the run. But that's an easy save on the first shot. Taken by Adam Horolak. Nice save there by Joseph Beam, the goaltender for McGill. At the other end, we may now get a chance to see Jackson Brown in action. One of the two Jacksons who tend the twine for Ex the Excalibur. Jackson Hayner also on the club. Both have a very successful season. Brown, the reigning def the goalie of the year in Kufla. McGill with their first offensive possession will take their time.
comes up to the top, and Alex Erbstein. Down to Isaiah Cree. Find the net. This is Dylan James, who is second in Kupla in scoring. And almost got another assist there, but a big stop. And then losing his footing was the Trent defender. And that one's going to get away. Go straight back to McGill and Isaiah Cree. We'll toss it up to the top where John Maraglia keeps it moving. Herbstein. Herbstein tries to dodge, switches hands, gets a shot off. It's right on the post. Brown was nestled up against the pipe and it pinged off the iron. Nice pick up there. Quite a move, cutting into the offensive zone. Great job by Sam Albert. Settles things down. He's going to wait for some help. Oh, and a little misguided pass. It's rolled ahead, but it's going to be turned over to McGill. Scoreless game so far. In our first of four 15-minute running time quarters. Stop time for the last 30 seconds of each quarter and two minutes at the end of the game. That one's out of play. We're gonna either was tipped by it might have gone off a Trent defender because it didn't look like a shot. That definitely looked like a pass, but McGill will retain possession. Bit of a challenge for the officials today. We've only got two officials. And a bit of a kerfuffle with scheduling. There was some miscommunication, and McGill was headed down for a three o'clock game. Trent thought the game was at six. We split the difference, we're going at 5 o'clock. There's a women's tournament this weekend, or a women's game day, league day. OUA Women's Lacrosse. Trent, Queens, Brock, and one other club. This is Queens and Brock playing just before these guys got on the field. Fun to see both disciplines, the men's and women's games, on the same day. Here's a pass to, Con or to Carter Schott on the near side. Flag coming because McGill has seven guys in the defensive zone. So it's going to be an offside penalty. Trent will see what they can concoct here against that huge group of red-shirted defenders. They're going to lose the ball. It's picked up, and McGill will go off to serve the first penalty of the game. Here's the first man-up opportunity on this chilly October day at Justin Chu Stadium. It's about seven or eight degrees. Make some noise for your Trent. Hanrahan starts with it up top. Hanrahan on his offside. That one may have been affected by the defender. It looked like John Meeks got his stick in the way, maybe a little bit of contact. Trent with the backup. They will retain the ball, but time ticking away on that penalty. Being served by Chris Coran. Horlack, pass inside, nice save by Beam as Cole Hanrahan, the deadly sniper, right on top of the crease, bounced that one and it was swallowed up by Beam. Little forecheck pressure by Trent to see if they can still take advantage of the power play, but it is going to end. We'll get back to even strength. McGill comes into the offensive zone. The ball handed off here to Louis Antoine Abreu. Abreu will hand it off. He's going to go for a change. He's going to make sure they've got the ball solidly in their possession before he takes off. Owen Howard has it back at the top. McGill still completing their transition, their change here, as Preston Norris goes back into the defensive zone and heads off. Isaiah Cree goes behind the net to James. Keep your eyes on Dylan James behind the net. And this is Rowan Burrell from BC. He is a dynamite young player. We're going to take a peek at some of his, some of what he's got going on this year in a bit. But McGill gets that back up. That was a shot. Well off the mark, but Dylan James with it. Spins. Backdoor. Nice finish. What a goal. They pass it across to the near side. Massimo Tovet tucks it home. All kinds of space for him. Off a great, all kinds of space for him. Off a great dodge coming out of the back. Yeah, 
see Dylan James coming out. You've got to respect James. Look at that. Nice little dodge, and nobody staying with Trevette. And it's one nothing for the Redbirds. Regal comes up with this one. Olivia Pomerlo. Pomerlo almost throws it back, and it looks like McGill's going to take a timeout. Nick Subri wants to have a chat with his club. Uh, there was some, uh, some danger there. Sam McDonald catching that pass in center. They're going to try and set up, see if they can extend this one nothing lead. We're almost nine minutes in to this Kufla East battle. Again, the winner is assured of second place in the East behind Carlton. Trent has a chance to go and get the Ravens, but they'd have to win big today. The first tiebreaker is head-to-head, -head one loss, and McGill and Carlton split, but McGill only beat Carlton by one goal, whereas Carlton won by four, by five goals, I believe, over the Redbirds, which gives Carlton the head-to-head tiebreaker tie if they are on top. So that would mean Carlton first, McGill second, and Trent would be at seven and three in third. The others would be at eight and two. If Trent wins today, Carlton and Trent also split their games. Both teams won by a single goal. So that makes the second tiebreaker, which is goals for and against in that head-to-head, -head, makes that even as well. So then we go to goals, goals average, which is a big formula that basically is a spreadsheet on our commissioner's computer. And he lets us know what's going on with that. I've looked at it and I've tried to figure it out the all the ramifications and he's explained it to us but it gets complicated but basically Trent needs to win by a bunch today and they need to make sure they don't give up many goals scoring goals for them is good but n l not letting them in is the real key for the Excalibur thanks for being with us across friends I'm Stephen Stamp this is Kufla Action Looks like Erbstein will start with possession for McGill. When we get rolling again after this timeout is over. Next week will be playoff weekend. Six teams in the West, four in the East will go into action. Trent, of course, with the bye to the Big Attaway Cup as the host again this year and defending champion. Running shot, but it's blocked out front. I think Miraglia thought he had a chance there, but really looked like they were all over that one. He does go and get the ball back after the battle at center field. Goose to head by Kyle Glick gives them a chance to a reset, and the Redbirds take advantage. James coming out from behind the net again. Ben McDonald all over him. Great job of the Trent defense, and it pops out. They've got possession and a very calm, poised play on the far side by the Trent defender. Here comes Jackson Brown. He'll take his time. It's an 80-second shot clock, 20 seconds to clear center. And then the rest of the time, skip forward. Shot takes that bounce pass. Nicely lobbed ahead by McDonald. Horlack will settle things down a bit. Shot comes back over center, and the sixth attacker goes out. That's Jordan Duell down to Millman. Millman with a huge weekend last week. Trent trotting a couple players through the middle as Duell cuts right on top of the crease. See, different looks every week for this Trent club. Coach Mark Farley and his crew. Always dialing up something. Almost tipped away, and that's going to be a bit of an issue. Nice active stick by Alexander Cowgill. But Trent coming to the net, they score. And after the ball got past Cowgill, a little bit of a scramble, but Horlack makes it count. You see this pass is going to be almost tipped. It's coming right here. 
It may have actually been tipped. Cowgill may have got some of that. And Adam Harlack, just great little spin there. Sticks his foot in the turf, rotates back around, and opens the lane for himself. McGill with possession off the faceoff following that first goal. It's tied 1 1. We got less than three and a half go here in the first quarter. This is exactly how we expected this to play out. McGill had a big win yesterday, beating Ottawa 11 to 4 to ensure that they would still have a chance to come in and finish ahead of Trent if they can get this big win. Bit of a collision there. As the play was being blown back in, McDonald just trots up into the offensive zone. He'll go back to get the change. McDonald just picked a few weeks ago in the first round of the National Lacrosse League entry draft. Rochester Nighthawks actually making a trade to be able to take him with the 15th pick overall. 16th pick, sorry. They took Graydon Hogg at 15. Hogg playing for Canada at the recent Fall Classic field tournament. Down in, I believe it was Sparks, Maryland. That one's turned over. A little slip again. It appears the turf's a little slick today. Did rain over the last few days. Pretty good turf, but I think they're just not wearing the, the appropriate shoes because of the sun. Nice effort here. Fighting over center. And Chris Perrin battling through a bunch of checks. Hands it off. And Rowan Burrell will slow things down. They'll finish the change. It's only four players now. A fifth coming into the offensive zone. McGill still getting, and one of them's a long pole. They're going to send him back and take their time. Preston Norris was ready to be part of the offense if needed, but they're going to wait and get all six offensive players out. And wanting his herbs team coming onto the field, he'll get it right there at the top. Watched by Nick Webb. Runs in open space, takes a shot that goes wide. A couple of McGill players back there, though, and they will retain possession. No fresh shot clocks. I don't think it hit goaltender Jackson Brown. Dylan James back up to Erbstein. He's got Burrell for an outlet behind him. He's going to rip a shot, though. Brown, nice adjustment. Looked a little awkward for a moment, but perfect position to catch that one. Lobs the pass out, and here comes Trent moving forward into the final minute of the first quarter. 1-1, still the score. Carter shot. Was looking to pass before he had it, but he recovers the ball. Now shot going to the middle. That pass is not near any of the Trent players. It'll be scooped up by McGill. And they could use the rest of this period to work for one shot. But right now, they're pushing the pace. <laughs> Looks like Isaiah Cree was thinking about a shot. Thought better of it. And they continue to carry the ball as Jack Busby passes around the back. James takes a big whack from McDonald. James will get a ton of attention. He is very dangerous. That one gets away from Cree, but it is back up there by Owen Howard. And McGill, with 21 seconds to play in the quarter, continues to retain possession. Here's Rowan Burrell. Watched on the far side for a bit there by Caleb Prench. Here's a drive to the net. Isaiah Cree, and he nips it inside the near post. Jackson Brown, as he tends to set up kind of on that far side, bait guys near side, he'll take it away a lot, but in this case, they slip one through. It's 2-1 to one with just 9.2 seconds to go here in the first quarter. You can see McGill will work it around. They're very well aware of the time they've got. There's Cree. Fights through it. And again, Brown, that's, that's got to be too far over. I kind of think he didn't realize he was over past his far post. Ball popped out. McGill will get almost possession. Jackson Brown's going to take a shot. Now it was a pass, but they were open. It was a long shot, and we tick through the final seconds of the first quarter. McGill Redbirds 2, Trent Excalibur 1. Thanks for being with us here on Kufla East Action. We'll be back in two minutes with the second quarter.
Welcome back, lacrosse friends. Quarter number two about to get underway. Sam McDonald taking the draw for McGill. He'll be up against Bronson Muller, who scored that huge overtime goal against Carlton in that big win. McGill controlled the ball off the faceoff, but big battle ensues, and the long pole is going after it. McGill comes away with it. They hand it to Rowan Burrell. It was Logan Glick that got possession of four the Redbirds. He wanted to stay up for the offensive set, but they're going to call him off and get all the attacking players on. Burrell down low, gets it back from Isaiah Cree. French picking up Burrell. Burrell goes to the net. Pretty good slide help, and Jackson Brown makes the save. That's going to be an over-the-head check. Carter shot battling for it, but Burrell is opposite 44, comes away with it. One hand shovel pass, ripped by Isaiah Cree. Nice save after a great defensive play to limit the opportunity initially. I think that was McDonald making that play. He rotates back to his position. Oh, but nobody's stopping that one. The blast from outside by John Miraglia. And the Redbirds go up three to one. There's the hustle by McDonald to get over there. And that shot gets way to the near side. Dylan James again initiating. You can see how quickly they start up. A nice pass by Erbstein. And that is a blast from downtown by Miraglia to triple up the score for the Ravens, the Redbirds. Another face-off win for McGill. This time they managed to control it cleanly afterwards. Louis Antoine Abra. Abra gets it ahead, and here come the Redbirds on the run. They'll slow things down. Sam McDonald, the face-off guy, will hand off and get to the bench for another offensive player. Busby returning to the McGill bench. You can see him running around on the far side there. He just came across the end zone. He's going to rejoin his team. Not sure if he had something to deal with inside. But he will rejoin the club and be ready to go. Nice save, Jackson Brown. Looking into the sun. The sun is setting as we play here, and that can be very challenging. You can see the shadows, how long they are heading to the right which means as McGill players are looking back for passes or as Brown is looking at shots, it can be pretty tricky with the sun on the horizon. Horlack takes it, the only goal scorer for Trent so far. We are three minutes and change into the second quarter. There's Jordan Jewell. Over to Millman. Dom Millman behind then to Hanrahan. Trent, as usual, going with four righties. Even with Jack McAlpine out for the season with a hand injury, they're still pretty heavily right-hand focused. There's Fletcher Backshell Jones at the top in from BC, one of the out-of-province players for Trent at this game, in this season. Here's a hard rip, just a little bit high on the far side. Nice attempt by Backshell Jones. Just didn't quite find his mark. Harassing defense by the SSDM, Maverick Hoziel. It's going to roll out and Trent will get possession. Cole Hanrahan will start with it. Sprints in. Drive on the off wing. That shot goes wide. Hanrahan going after it. Dives and it's going to be McGill possession. Hanrahan thinks he had position, and I think he might have been right. I don't know if we get a chance to look at that one again as McGill is clearing. But just curious about the positioning there. 
Again, it's whoever is closest to the ball when it leaves the playing field, when it goes out of the line. So nice hustle by McGill Handerhand working hard to try and get it back for Trent. Didn't quite work out for him. And uh, five minutes into the second quarter, McGill continues to lead three to one. Erbstein hard rip, and you can see Jackson Brown make the save and kind of look up. I think that sun is a real factor, but that's a great save. What a play there. Nice job by Caleb French. In traffic, the ball loose, and he just taps it over so it can be scooped up by Dallin Rye. It's a heck of a play by the long pole. Trent's defenders having a pretty solid day in the transition game. A couple of gaps have come up on them as McGill works in the offensive end. Here's Trent now, though, on the attack. Horlack. Right, look behind the net. Hanrahan, not really there, so they're going to rotate, swing it back around. Now they get it to Hanrahan. John Meeks on him. Meeks forced a bit of an off-target pass. Great hustle or work by Horlack to fight off the defender and hang on to it as Preston Norris was all over him. Here's Horlack. Thought about going to the left. He comes near side instead. That one pops away from Jack Marwick. Marwick falls down. Ball is loose. Trent will recover it. Shot clock ticking down. Here's Horlack. Spins underneath. Tries a shot. Scores! Low to low. Just a slight riser. I think Joseph Beam wants that one back. You can see he just kind of double clutched. After the shot goes in, he couldn't quite believe it. Nice diving effort there by Marwick. Allows Trent to continue. A little spin underneath. Doesn't look like a great angle, but that's a perfect shot by Harlock. Just past the shin of Joseph Beam. Pulls Trent within a goal. Seven minutes into the second quarter. 3-2 McGill over Trent. Thanks for being with us, lacrosse friends. I'm Steven Stamp, and this is Kufla 2023. So Trent gets possession off the face, or McGill gets possession off the face off, sorry. They're going to take their second time out of the half and set things up. No, it is Trent. <laughs> I'm just confusing everybody here. But we've recovered. It's a Trent timeout. They got the ball. They've taken possession. And they are going to set up in the offensive zone and try to tie, thing, tie things up with a half of the second quarter to go. Wish I could blame somebody else, but that was all me. So here's that loose ball battle. And oh, that was close. I think it's because it went, it was off to the left because Hanrahan was closer to the goal line. I think if it had been heading down that way, he probably gets it. But you can see Mike, uh, Mike Drake, Michael Drake, perfect position to make that call. And again, only two officials because of the uh, confusion created today of today's game. Nobody's sure whether it was at three o'clock or six o'clock. So that leaves us with two officials today, which. They're doing a good job, and they can handle it, but it does mean a little different positioning, some different mechanics. Drake was racing down there as the three of them, Drake and the two players, heading for it, and McGill gets that possession. They lead 3-2. to two. Let's see what Trent has dialed up. As usual, Cole Hanrahan is going to start back at X. We'll start with dual in possession. Over along the far sideline. Harlack, the scorer of both the Trent's goals, will take this pass now. He's got the LSM up on him. That's Pomerlo. Both the short sticks over on that center to far side up at the top. Little inversion now as Preston Norris comes across. This is going to be handed over to Dallin Rye. Fakes high, drives down low. Well covered there. 
by Glick. The ball's loose. It's on the ground. And it's going to be scooped up. Nice play. Maverick Hosiel. And he is going for a run. McGill successfully clears. And they've got some numbers here. Oh, my. Yeah, he's not having. Oh. They're going to call that a shot. I honestly thought he was trying to pass the ball. Either way, it was way off target. Probably eight feet over the top of the net. Definitely got away from him. Maybe give some credit to the Trent defender. It looks like there was a little bit of pressure. Erbstein switches hands, passes it down. Oh, and that one's just thrown away. Isaiah Cree couldn't handle the pass at mid-thigh, and the Excalibur will get the ball. Another player slipping. This time it was Dylan James going down. The changes of direction, the sharp changes of direction, seem to be problematic for the players this afternoon. We'll see how things evolve as the game goes on. You see Baxel Jones goes down to one knee to take the pass. It was way harder pass to accept than the one he wound up having to throw, but he still tossed it over his teammate's head over to the Trent sideline. And McGill will take possession. It'll be Antoine Ab into the offensive zone. There's another pass thrown away. <laughs> and Isaiah Cree extends the arm looking for the backup. That was definitely not a shot. No pressure so far on Trent. They're going to have an easy clear and get it up ahead. Here comes some pressure. Dallin Rye on the run. Just drops it there and basically made it a 50-50 ball. Effort going after it by Baxhell Jones, but he had a couple of McGill players all over him, and the Redbirds will take it. Here's Rome Burrell trying to get underneath. Good job by French. Manages to get the shot off. Burrell, actually one of my intriguing players to watch for a future NLL draft. He's got inside the cross, ILindoor.com. I did uh, 10 players to keep an eye on for each of the next four NLL drafts, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Don't remember right now which one he is, he's in, but look at them all, and you'll see him in there with, along with a lot of other very promising players. Here's Dallin Rye. Watch by Glick. McGill really improving as the season has gone on. It's getting more and more dangerous. Defense really coming together. Here's Horlack looking to even things up. That shot's going to get well off target. Cole Hanrahan will just do a little self-pass with his hand into his stick to start play back up. Watched closely by Ryan Bedour. Great strip by Bedour. Pitched battle for that ball on the ground, and it's eventually tapped away and scooped up by John Meeks. Meeks on the run. He's got Burrell up ahead. He's electing to keep running with it. Now he makes the pass, and you can see how much trouble Burrell had with that one in the sun. Oh, great strip. What a play there. I think that was Chris Shell. Yeah. Shell, who actually made the defensive play to strip the ball that set up the transition chance that resulted in the game-winning goal against Carlton. And there's a goal, and Jackson Brown is not going to like that one. That's the easiest goal of the year for Dylan James as Brown just didn't quite make the pass he was intending to. You can see he's got some time directing traffic and then decides he's going to make a quick pass and just not high enough to get into the second level, and James wastes no time knowing that Brown can't possibly get back. Just bounces a long one into the open net. It's 4-2, to two. McGill, 2.18 to go here in the first half. Go to kupla.ca to see all the standings, stats. And a bit of an upset over in the west. 
Here's another chance for McGill. Isaiah Cree takes it. He's going to hang on as he kind of lost his balance under some checking from Trent. But Western finishes up at 9-1. and one. Their perfect season spoiled by Gu uh, Guelph. Western, Brock, and Guelph. The usual suspects in the mix in the West, but boy, McMaster right in there. Laurier, really strong season. I mean, interesting playoffs over in the West. We'll be here in the East as well, of course, with McGill. We'll be facing the Queen Scales. Carlton's going to face Bishops. Trent straight on to the McGadaway Cup. Good passing. Sidearm rip. Nice chance for Nick Webb. He can't believe he missed that one. He's going to head off, and Trent will get some changes, but they will retain possession. Webb was a nice chance right in the slot. Take him up quickly to Dallin Ryan. He'll take his time. Over to Marwick. Final 30 seconds of this second quarter. Rye ducking underneath. Glick with him. That pass is low, but scooped up in a nice reverse whip attempt by Jordan Duell. But that one's a little bit wide. Trent's going to keep the ball in 20 seconds to go. 30 seconds left. The Jumbos have the ball. Make some noise. And Trent will take their second time out of the half and set things up to see what they can do in these final seconds and then get back within one pick up jackson brown for his error at the other end he has done so much for this team over the last couple of seasons you know they're going to want to have his back try and get that goal back for him so playoffs next weekend again the top four teams outside of trent in the east will play the highest seed against the fourth highest seed, second against third, outside of the, the host Trent, and in the West. Again, you can go to the stand, go to the uh, Kufla.ca page. Western is nine and one. Not all the scores are up yet. Guelph with a strong finish. Looks like they'll be second. Then Brock and McMaster battling for third place. And looks likely that they'll play each other. It's a matter of who gets to be the home team. Laurier in the mix for that third spot as well. Possibly. There are some game, a lot of games going on this weekend. Nipissing definitely has the sixth Play, spot in a playoff position. They'll be playing Western. Big challenge for them. Anybody playing Western this year is in tough. The 28 goals the Western allowed through eight games, and they didn't. They did give up 13. I believe they lost 13 to seven to Guelph, but they were on record pace for fewest goals allowed in a Kufla season. Now we're ready to roll with 20 seconds underway. Trent with it. Taking their time. There's a chance for a shot hard rip. That one's blocked out front. Seven seconds left. I mean, Gill is on the run. We're going to have a pole shot. And a save by the leg of Jackson Brown. What a huge stop. Big disappointment for John Meeks as he thought he was going to get one there. Love to see the pole goals. Love to see the pole attempts. But it will be 4-2 to two for the Redbirds as we go to halftime. We'll take a break and we'll see you for the second half of Kupla East action. McGill 4, Trent 2. We'll see you in a few minutes.
and it is 42 McGill. They have been winning a lot of faceoff battles. It looks like they're going get to get another one there. We're going to have a loose ball push on McGill, and Trent will get possession, though. In the offensive zone, it'll start with Dom Millman on the near side. Jordan Duell will take that pass. She joins the attack. It is chilly here in Peterborough. It's about seven degrees, maybe a little lower even. Big difference from some games we saw even a week or two ago. When we had a couple weeks ago, we had a game here. It was 23 degrees. If you're one of our lacrosse friends from south of the border, that's, I don't know, 80s maybe in Fahrenheit. None of us know, actually. Jordan Duell. Watch closely. They make the pass off. Chance from the top. Dallin Rye thought about or Horlack thought about the shot. Might as well. He's the only guy scoring so far, but makes the pass instead. That gets away. We've had a lot of passes going awry. You'll notice they're largely in that end. I went down at halftime onto the field and took a look down into the sun. It is vicious right now it's just above the horizon if you're looking into that you cannot see if the ball is right in it there's a big check well a little check but it was on the goaltender joseph beam nice job by beam to withstand it and now here comes mcgill into the offensive zone a little tumble but popping straight back up was chris shell and shell with the big check last week for the that set up the game winner against carlton he made the strip Ben McDonald ran the field, got it to Nick Webb. Webb over to, I believe, Dallin Rye. And Rye to Bronson Muller, the freshman faceoff, who stayed out, still had his faceoff stick at the time, actually, and shoveled a shot from his knees up into the top corner. Beautiful goal to give Trent that win. Here's Dylan James with it for McGill now. As they're going to try and get a win here today, they have a 4-2 lead as we are early in the third quarter. James on the near side. Here's Herbstein. Could have sworn he was wearing tights in the first half. It's it's chilly, but it's not too bad. There's a definitely a bit of a wind, but it, the wind has actually died down a bit, which is helpful for passing. Now we're going to have the third, the eighty second clock expires. Outlet pass, French is on the run. Flips it across. Oh, big hit! And that looked very much like a stick to the face from Ryan Bedour. McGill up into the offensive zone. We'll toss it behind the net to Rowan Burrell is back there. A little bit of an inversion of their usual process. As Dylan James is up on the wing now. Herbstein on the near side. Right back to James. Burrell floating on the far wing. Looking for it, but James is going to go for a run as offside. Fights his way through the defender's one-hand shot. Turned aside by Brown. Quite a play by Dylan James. And here's the check at the other end. I think. Here we go. You can see five. Oh, no, you know what? Yeah, it might have been okay. Ref was right there in position. Bedour just kind of got the stick up almost into the shoulder. A little poke check. And the Trent player went over. McGill went down, got a chance, but it was turned aside by Jackson Brown. And now it's Horlack trying to fight his way through. He's got Cowgill on him. French going back over center. Or sorry, Carter shot for Trent going back over center. Here's a chance now. Duel knocked flat, loses his stick. Penalty coming. I think the stick going flying may have been the deciding factor here. You see a solid collision. Duel. Down to Millman. Full cycle and the hard rip by Duel. That's blocked out front. Hanrahan goes from behind the back, but it got away from him. Bounces loose, but it is scooped back up by Horlack. 
Trent trying to take advantage of this power play. We're five minutes into the third. They only have two goals. And that one is a bomb goal on the back side of the mesh. Scooped up there by Meeks. Long outlet pass, and he connects. Shot was coming hard, but they just get it through. Isaiah Cree, what a rocket. Who gets that one? McGill does get it. Jackson Brown was almost the closest to the, the back line while he was in front of his net on that transition play. Here's Burrell. Game is back to Burrell. Come up to Tovet at the top. Tovet scored the first goal for McGill today. Burrell. Leaves it for James. He's watched by French. McDonald and French. Good two-man defense on McGill's two most dangerous players. Burrell had to go up and get that one. McDonald staying with him. Physical play on the verge of penalizable, I would suspect, from McDonald, but just staying nicely within the parameters to just make it difficult on the McGill. Oh, here comes Tovet from behind. Burrell goes to X. He's going to take this next pass. Hits the cutter. Oh, nice behind the back attempt. I'm not sure how that pass got through to Tovet. And there's a Trent player down looking very uncomfortable. And he can't see who that is. Again, those virtually invisible numbers for Trent making it a little tough to tell who that player was, but he just got to the sideline and dropped to his hands and knees once again. So we're going to reset the shot clock. And McGill will have possession. Almost like a European football play where McGill kind of slowed things down and let the Trent D midi just head off. And he is being talked to by the training staff. And he is not moving a whole lot. You can see him on the far side of the field there. McGill's shot goes wide. Isaiah Cree with the backup. He'll get this possession. Oh, no. There's somebody further back. Okay. Dylan James is going to start with it instead as Cree goes to the slot. He and Tovet, a little stack. Burrell quickly up top, and here's Luke Dalek. Dalek on the give and go. Hard rip, but Jackson Brown, no problem. Had that all the way. We're going to have a ward off on McGill. So the effort from French is rewarded. Flag down. Trent going to try and set things up. That pass gets away, but they're going to have, they're just going to leave it there as play will be blown down. And the procedure call will give Trent a man advantage. They still have just two goals. Jordan Jewell down to Dom Millman. Quick movement. The pass was knocked down. Active stick by Bedour, but Trent's going to get it back. It's one thing to knock the ball loose but and down to the ground, but it's harder to recover when you're short a man. You don't have as much coverage. Trent Jewell thought about the shot. Makes the pass across Millman right on the crease. Just got away from him. And he'll come to the near side to Meeks. He's got room to run it up over center, and that will do it for the McGill penalty as they go up into the offensive zone. They're just getting their sixth attacker out there now, finishing up their change back in the defensive zone, and Meeks, who ran it up, will roll it across and head back into his end, leaving the ball there for Miraglia, who has one of the McGill goals today. 5.55 to go here in the third quarter of a low-scoring defensive battle Pretty good goaltending at either end, but neither goalie has been challenged a ton. It's the defensive defenses have really been limiting 
the scoring opportunities. Great change of direction by James, but then the pass gets away. That's going to roll into the Trent bench and the Excalibur. As you can see, a couple of their coaches pointing the way, just helping out the officials, make sure they're aware. It is white ball. It will go back to Jackson Brown. Ben McDonald's up in the offensive zone. He's going to take that pass. Looks to attack. Not there. Hands it off. Smart decision. Here comes Trent onto the offense. Rye back to Millman. Duel is up at the top as Hanrahan runs around at X. There's Duel taking it now. One of the few lefties that Trent generally has out on the attack. Drive down the shoulder. Pass handed off. Quick movement. Goes to Hanrahan behind the net. Here's Horlack fighting through. They're all over him. Another slip. Not sure if that pass was going to Hanrahan. It is recovered. Now they get it to Hanrahan. He's going to score that one every time. Hanrahan deadly on the crease. And the ball kind of bouncing around a bit. Just scooped up by Horlack, who has a couple of goals. And now will add an assist as Trent pulls within one with four minutes and change to go here in the third quarter. You see Hanrahan with the black tights. Down low, he is just going to... They're going to try to make the pass through. It's tipped by a couple of people. The Hanrahan just stays down low. Nobody picks him up. Coming across to get him, to try and get him was Kyle Glick, but he just did not have time to get over there to help out. And the deadly Hanrahan makes it a one-goal game here in the third quarter. Face-off violation by Trent, so McGill will take the ball, and Rowan Burrell finds his man. Here's Miraglia taking his time. Herbstein. They're still completing their change. He was driving, taking a look. Dylan James popped up, but Herbstein had already headed back the other way. Miraglia tried to make the pass across. That one was blocked. Tapped ahead. Can he get it? Yes. What a great play there by Chris Shell, who is coming on, just playing some great lacrosse for Trent over the last couple of weeks. Really coming into his own. In Kukla. Trent completing their change. Looked like Horlack wanted to shoot. Now he will. What a goal. Adam Horlack with the hat trick goal. Just an off a, a power forward move here throws the shoulder into his defender creates space and everything just opens up as he blasts his man out of the way you see Horlack coming in gets it just off the bench and he'll do the rest himself a little pick slid through and then boom wins the collision actually bounces John Meeks about three steps back away and Meeks not happy with himself but that's just a win by Horlack for his third of the game to make it 4-4 as we enter the final two minutes of the third quarter. A big body goal to decide the game. Chance for McGill Stop right off a faceoff. Stop there by Jackson Brown. Here's French. Also, what a save. That pass was behind Muller. That one's dropped as well. Looks like the sun is pretty much down behind the trees now and less of a factor. It was definitely tough making some passes. If you're looking back to our left earlier, you can see the shadows now four ways as it's from the lights above instead of from the sun. And we are 4-4 heading into the final minute of the third quarter. Horlack has been the man so far for Trent with three goals and then the assist on that Hanrahan marker. As Trent has battled back. Here's Jordan Duell. Watched by Abra, the McGill captain. Hanrahan from X. Quick pass to Horlack. Took him a little while to find the handle. So Beam was all set. Opted not to take the shot. Now they try and feed one in front, but Beam's going to take that. Quick outlet pass. Here comes Badur. 
Little pressure from Harlack as he throws it ahead. Owen Howard from Cincinnati, Ohio. All kinds of pressure. He is stripped. And it's Marwick coming up with the ball, playing a two-way game here on the run. He's got shot with him. Now shot's going to retreat. He will take this pass, though, before he heads back. He's going to stay in play for a bit. Penalty coming. Again, seven McGill players in the defensive zone. Bit of a messy offside chance. And that is going to lead to a goal. A little sidearm shot on the run by Fletcher Backshell Jones. You actually could see all seven players from Miguel in frame there for a second. Nice sidearm shot. The defender racing out at him. Little over aggressive on the defensive play, and Backshell Jones makes him pay. Maxwell Jones, his second goal of the season. And last second goal by Trent to go up one. His second goal of the season. Fletcher Maxwell Jones. And we are through three quarters of play. And Trent, what a run. They were down four to two. They have come back with three straight goals late in that third quarter to go ahead five to four. Backshell Jones' goal coming with just seconds to play. We'll take a break and we'll be back with quarter number four. It's 5-4 Trent over McGill. Lots of excitement to come on Kupla action. Thanks for being with us, lacrosse friends. We'll be back in two minutes. Here we go, lacrosse friends. 15 minutes to decide. A winner between McGill and Trent. The Excalibur, three goals in a row to pull ahead, five to four, heading into the fourth quarter. The Excalibur go right to left for this final quarter. McGill looks like they have possession, and they will go left to right in the red jerseys. Good job, Thomas Mc Sam McDonald with possession there. Trent on the defensive end right now. Curtis Conley out today. Sounds like a minor tweak, but he was he decided not to push it for this game. Ball pops loose. Chase down. Nick Webb with all kinds of pressure. Knocks it free again. Comes up with the ball. Webb, one of the Trent players who's been with this program for a while and stepping up into a way bigger role this year. You can see the solid 
D-Mitty playing. He'll stay up and play some O now and then. He's going to stay for this possession. And as I say that, he heads to the bench to get another offensive player out. I think he could have stayed. Hanrahan up to Millman. Finds this is Horlack on the near side uh, taking it from Backshell Jones. Here's Dallin Rye. Hanrahan near the back line. He's ran a couple of full revolutions. Horlack takes another one. He's got three goals and an assist. Rye to X. Oh, that was off the crossbar. We saw a goal last week that was similar that went off the crossbar, down and in. That one stayed out. The one last week was so quick from, I think it was Jordan Duell, from a very similar spot, that low to high, that we couldn't even tell. Even on the replay, we couldn't tell how the ball had gone in. I thought it had just hit down low and gone off the metal inside, but it had hit the crossbar, gone down so fast and spun out, but it was over the goal line. This one, another hard, a low, rise, low to high riser. Straight off the crossbar and out, though. Horlack taking his time to set things up. Trent gets the substitution completed. Last man on right there was Marwick, and he's got the ball back. Mar Marwick was looking to go across to the left. He said, no, no, rotate it around. Now it makes its way up to Duel, down to Millman. That pass doesn't connect, it's snagged by Palmerlow. He's going for a run, he'll get up over center. And McGill, looking to even things up. Leaves it there for Dylan James. Burrell, nice save, jumping and kicking for Jackson Brown to take as much space as possible. Then he swoops in to pick up that loose ball. And makes the outlet pass, here's Ben McDonald. Going to split the D. Nice job going through the double team. And McDonald calmly runs up over center, hands it off, and heads back to his position. And the team's getting into it over at the bench. Just to the right of where the camera's currently pointing. So the two teams coming together at the bench, the players on the benches, and they're not supposed to be anywhere near the center line. There is a, a line basically where those orange pylons are. You don't come past that. They usually have sticks and things lining it out. We'll see what the adjudication is here as the coaches come together. Mark Farthing for Trent, Nick Subri for McGill. Pretty healthy rivalry between these two clubs. They've been battling for first in the East basically every year for several years now. Trent has generally been getting the better of that battle, but it's been tight every year. The Excalibur, of course, the defending Begataway Cup champions. Our friend's got the ball back. He's always a contender. No penalties. Just a thorough dressing down from the officials, both benches, and away we go. Hanrahan at X, thumbs to Rye. Trent well extended on the O, pulling the defenders out as McGill coming out to cover everybody, not really just sitting back. Here's Marwick. Changes direction. That pass is tipped aside. Meek's got a stick on it. Dil did still get through. Millman. Sorry, that's Duel. Driving down low. I think Backshell Jones was thinking shop of the pass was on his left arm. 
left shoulder instead of the right. He is going to go and get a possession. Is that shot well wide? And the Excalibur will hold on to the ball. No reset on the on the eighty. You see this pass just on the left shoulder. It's kind of low position wise anyway. And that hard underhand from Millman, just wide. He wasn't missing anything last week. I believe it was five goals in the one game that Millman had. Huge night for him. Hanrahan up on the wing. Often starts his dodges, starts his attack coming from X. He's going to invert, pop up to the top and take that one. Quickly moves it. Starts to slide down the slot. And they're keeping an eye on him. But they lost him for a second it looks like. But immediately picked up. He's being watched closely by Ryan Bedour. Oh, that's a lovely finish. I thought Beam had the stop. The official will take a peek, and it is a nice goal. Just trying to catch. I think this is Adam Horlack again. Horlack, what a night. Four goals and an assist. Trent goes up six to four. Scores his one, two, three, fourth of the game. Number 11. Again, a big battle for the faceoff. That's going to be McGill possession on that loose ball battle. And honestly, it looked like the McGill player kind of lost his balance, and then wound up getting the bump anyway as he was falling. Tough break, actually, for the Trent player because I don't think it was an egregious play, but probably was the correct call, making that possession call. Here comes McGill into the attack, trying to get back into this. They were up 4-2 to two midway through the third quarter. I think they're a little shocked to find themselves down 6-4. to four. Horlack, the prime driver, but Trent getting contributions all over the field, including, of course, from goaltender Jackson Brown and his defense. Here's Nick Webb on the check on Erbstein, who keeps it moving. Thought they were going to Burrell. They go the skip pass. That one gets away, though, from Miraglia. And Trent will come up with it. Oh, nice little touch pass. Out of trouble by Albert French. And Dallin Rye will just slow things down. Trent not in a hurry with a two-goal lead in seven and a half minutes, plus just a little over halfway left in the fourth quarter. Horlack. Looks like they're playing, paying closer attention to him now, as you might expect at this point in this game. Horlack has a lane, shoots. Not close enough attention. Horlack runs through the entire McGill defense, and they just look at each other like, what is going on? As it is seven to four, Horlack with his fifth. Horlack thinking about passing. He's going to say, no, I'll just hang on to it for now. And then when he's able to get under the defender, and there's just no help. Again, Trent spreading the O out, really pulling the defenders out, forcing them out wide, and then Horlack just running into that space, taking perfect advantage of it. But somebody's got to be coming to help him. Oh, yeah. His fifth of the game. Trent Cole scored by number 11. Bronson Muller with the trail Adam check. Harlan. And then sends the stick flying. Miguel still comes away with possession. But they are down by three. They need the ball. They need to make something happen for him. But Sam McDonald leaves it there. Owen Howard still has it. He's got a shot coming out to him. Another shot, another one of these Trent defenders is really stepping up his game as the season goes on. Trent, of course, will not play next week and with the bye to the Begataway Cup. So this is it for them until until at least the quarterfinals of Begataway weekend. Hard shot is wide. It'll be McGill possession on the backup. Burrell will start with it. Again, playoffs next weekend. Everything will be finalized after today's play. We'll see the six teams and how they're matching up in the West. 
to see uh, the four teams playing in the playoffs next weekend here in the East. That bouncer threw a lot of traffic, but Brown was able to see it. Makes the stop on his knees. And Trent on the run. They would love to get another one. Low pass, nicely handled by Ryan. Oh, what a save. Jonah Beam stops Cole Hanrahan. Are you kidding? That was fantastic. Slashing call coming. The Excalibur love to run. We haven't seen a ton of transition from them, but look at Jackson Brown popping up. The quick pass there. Love the quick head man. Moving on. Great transition from there. We didn't see another tight power play or anything from this young man up here. Terrific bunch of passes by Trent. Goes through five players en route to a great scoring chance from Hanrahan. Joseph Beam has been tremendous for McGill. I feel like Jackson Brown may have faced more opportunities, actually, from the Redbirds. He's been great for the Excalibur. Trent up 7-4 to four with another power play opportunity. 5.09 to play. It's looking very much like right now the order in the East will be Carlton in first place. What a year for the Ravens. As they finish 8-2, and two, score 105 goals. They've been coming on, but this is a huge step. For them, Trent will be tied for them if they can hang on to this one at 8-2, and two, but they're not going to get the tiebreaker if they win by a few goals. They'd need to get another six goals here in the final five minutes. Seems a bit of a stretch. You never know. McGill would drop to 7-3 and three if this one holds up. They'd be third. Queens finishing at 4-6, and six, although for them, the big win over Trent just a couple days ago on Friday night, can the Gales keep that momentum going as they will face McGill, regardless of what happens in these final 5.09. Queens will be heading to McGill to play the Redbirds. Love what Connor Kiernan is doing as the head coach of that program and working with some very talented and dedicated young players. Queens is really looking better as they go along as well. And then Bishop will be the final Eastern playoff team. They're going to go to Carlton, try and pull off an upset there as they finish three and seven. Trent methodical on the power play. Millman, there's the movement. Hanrahan rips one. Not sure if that was tipped aside by Beam or if he just missed it. Got a little bit off target anyway. And Trent, with the backup, gets it back. going to be McGill possession. I think Trent was trying to convince the officials that was tipped, but it was just a missed pass. And the Redbirds are going to be able to kill the rest of this penalty. And as they move forward, take their time getting into the attack. But they can't take too much time. They've only got 4.15 and they need three goals. Nice run taken there by Jack Busby. He'll head back and the attack will get out. Burrell was our player to watch for McGill. He's had a very quiet day. Here's Dylan James, a quiet day by his standards as well. Second leading scorer in Kupla. That pass is a goal. It turns into a shot. Dylan James was trying to pass it through. Don't know if it actually tipped off the stick of, of uh, Josh Jewell. We'll see on the replay. This is James with the ball. You can see he's just going to come across the top, tries a little flip pass. I don't think it touched Jewel. I'm not sure it touched the defender. I think it just went by everybody. Jackson Brown is watching the player cutting through the middle, thinking the pass is to him, which I think was intended. And Dylan James looked as confused as anybody about that one going in. But it'll count. 3.15 to go. It's a two-goal game. Nick Webb comes up with that loose ball. He has just been a gritty and tremendous player for Trent this year. Watched closely by Cowgill. Gets the pass through. Thought we might see Muller go to the net, but he wisely pulls it back out. Trent, it's probably more important for them to have seconds tick away here. He'd love to get a good scoring chance. He'd love to get another goal at the end. Right through traffic, Horlack. Player of the game for Trent today, no question. If this was a Gataway Cup, I, my money would be on him being their player of the game and getting the, the award. We're going to have some sponsors who 
su su supply some gear. It's pretty cool stuff for the players of the game on each team. Make sure that you are with us for Gataway Cup weekend live on Lacrosse TV and the Kufla YouTube channel, November 3rd to 5th. Here's a chance cutting to the middle. Good D trailing. It's going to get through. Oh, Hanrahan almost picked that one up, and it will be a violation. And Trent's going to get it back. That's huge. Now, is it a fresh 30? Not, or a fresh 80? Didn't see the indication. November 3rd will be the quarterfinal Friday. Games at 4.30 and 7.30. Saturday, semifinal Saturday. Here's a chance and a goal. Hanrahan with a dagger with 145 to play. Makes it 8 to 5. Great passing play. Hanrahan probably did the least of everyone, but a beautiful finish. Great hands by Hanrahan to take that pass. You can see the effort here. I think that's Jordan Gould making the pass to him, and Hanrahan darts out of nowhere. That is the goal scorer's knack for timing, and the hands to just throw the little reverse whip past Joseph Beam. 8-5 to five Trent. Another face-off win for McGill. Miraglia. Again, it was four to two for McGill. Since then, four to one in favor of the Excalibur. Burrell quickly over to James. Not sure if it's quickly enough, though. They really got to go. James trying to dodge down the middle. Slide coming. Still gets the shot off. We're going to have a penalty, and another flag goes up and lands. Another flag. They're everywhere. Not sure if the initial penalty is on Trent or if it's on McGill as the, as the player went into the crease. And now the hat, because Mike Drake has thrown all of his flags. McDonald is pretty fired up. He does not like that player going into his crease. By his goalie, he was definitely checking. Checked in. Here's the replay. James goes in. There's the slide. Yeah, and that's that's the first one's got to be on James, as he goes into the crease. He did get bumped, but he ha didn't even try to avoid the goaltender. Goes right in by his feet. But then Trent's going to get something as they chop down on him in the crease. Fair enough. I don't think anybody on the Trent coaching staff will complain. But their players coming to the aid of their goaltender there. The real concern right now, Jackson Brown is down on the turf. He is signaling. Is he saying I'm okay or is he saying bring Hainer in? I think he's waving him off. Ah, smart. I just got it. Music guy's playing shake it off because he is shaking off the injury and shaking off the bench. Asking him if they need someone to come in for him. Hainer was ready. I assume he was ready. I actually didn't see. I was focusing on Brown. Now he's limping. He is. He might be coming out. Big discussion. The ref still hasn't put his hat back on. See, just to the very right edge of the screen is where the conversation is happening. So Dylan James is over in the penalty box area. He's having a conversation with Ben McDonald, I believe, as the Trent player in there. One eleven to play. With the whistle is blown in. Here's Burrell trying to dodge. Just one-on-one -on -one defense there and just nothing doing. Then the save by Brown. Scooped up nicely. I think that was Muller getting it. Here comes Trent into the offensive zone. That was actually Sam Albert, D Mitty in the staying in the defensive zone. I want to give him some credit because that was a really nice play. Come up with that ball and be very poised. That's one thing that Trent has been showing more and more as the season goes on is poise 
under pressure situations, which is huge because they are a fairly young team. Not a lot of depth because they've had a bunch of guys graduate, but they've been working and working to get their young players in and playing and getting big quality minutes. And you can see it paying off. Guys like Chris Shell and right there, Sam Albert, some of these players taking on bigger roles. We talked about Nick Webb, uh, Bronson Muller with the big goal. There are guys who are playing really big roles. Carter Schott is uh, running with his chance to get lots of playing time. The Gatorade Cup, November 3rd to 5th. Again, Friday, quarterfinals, Saturday, semifinals, and then Sunday, we will crown the 2023 Big Gatorade Cup champion. Trent certainly hoping that the trophy will stay here as they try to defend the river. They're going to be challenged. Western really looking like the club to watch out for from the west. Guelph, Brock, McMaster, Laurier, Nipissing, all having a say in that one. In the east, Carlton is going to finish first, unless Trent can get five goals, eight, six goals, maybe seven goals actually here in the last 44 seconds. Doesn't matter, obviously. They're not going to get them. They're not even going to try. They're just going to let the seconds tick away, kill the final moments of this game. Fittingly, Adam Horlack, man of the match for the Excalibur, is going to be given the job of running away with it. He's got the double team. We've seen his shooting. We've seen his nose for the net. Now we're seeing his speed. And now that is another goal. How many is that? Six for Adam Horlack. Count them up. Toss your socks. Hopefully you're wearing an extra pair because it's so cold. And you can afford to chuck some on the field for Adam Horlack. And his sock trick. And you can see the double team there. And then just nothing in the middle of the field. Everyone's watching their men closely. They're not allowed to pass. A little slide comes. It's way too late. I think McGill may be a little surprised that Horlack actually took that shot with a three-goal lead and half a minute to play. But Another thing that bodes well for Trent as they try to defend this is the number of players who are taking on big roles. Horlack with the sock trick this time. At Dom Millman with a huge game last week. We've seen Jordan Duell have big games. Cole Hanrahan contributes every game. I mean, he is one of the best snipers in this league. And it's going to be McGill possession. We're going to try and get one back. It's going to be academic because we've got just 14 seconds to go. It'll be a Trent win. Will it be 9-5 or 9-6? It'll be 9-5. One last save by Jackson Brown. Goes the length of the field. The only guy who could challenge Horlack for player of the game for Trent would be Jackson Brown. He has been fantastic. But Horlack, six goals as Trent wins 9-5. to five. The Excalibur are going to come second. They go to the Magadaway Cup. And next week will be playoff weekend. And then Begattaway Cup November 3rd to 5th here at Justin Chu Stadium on the campus of Trent University on the banks of the beautiful Autonomy River. You see the dates there. Go to kufla.ca to see all the details of the game. What a matchup here between the Excalibur and the Redbirds. A 4-2 lead for McGill turns into a 9-5 win for the Excalibur. It's got everyone pretty fired up here in the booth as there's chairs are flying, bodies are flying inside and out. I'm Steven Stamp. Thanks for being with us here for this Kufla action. Go to kuflac.ca to check out all the results. Join us on Lacrosse TV for live coverage.